Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I'm uploading a new video, depending on the option that you choose and the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links in the description box below. What do I have going on for you for today? Today, I thought I'd bring you along with me while I paint and decorate the outside windows of my house. Kayla and I both were inspired to do this by my mom. This was something that my mom did a lot of. She used to paint a lot of windows for businesses and every now and again, I'd get lucky enough for her to come to the house and do our windows was when she wasn't so busy during the winter season. And I tell you, the few times that she did do our windows, she did an amazing job. One year she did a fire truck with Santa driving it and it was amazing. That one hands down was one of my favorites. I'm going to look for the pictures because honestly, I don't know where it, any of them are thanks to the digital age. I mean, I wish I would have just printed out the pictures. They are on some device somewhere. And so I'm going to look for them before I upload this video. And if I find them crossing my fingers that I do, I'm going to insert them and show you just how amazing my mom's work was. But because she used to do this, I don't know what it was. I think that this Christmas, because I'm just drawing so much inspiration from my mom and a lot of my Christmas DIYs, I just, for some reason, felt this overwhelming feeling to try and paint the windows of my house. Now, this is not something that I've ever done before. I've never even attempted to do it. Neither has Kayla, but I tell you, I already knew that Kayla would have the ability to do it because she's such a true artist. But like I've voiced to you all before, when it comes to artistry and drawing, this is not my strong suit. And I think that today I'm really gonna be stepping out of my comfort zone and I am going to be challenging myself to do this because this is something that I really kinda wanna make a tradition out of. And Kayla was all for it. She thinks that we should do this. I think she has a little bit more faith in me than I have in myself, but we're gonna give this a go. And we are both going to do two different windows of the house. I'm gonna try and make it as easy and basic as possible, but still bring in that cute factor. And Kayla, she's got a bit more detail in what she's doing and hats off to her. I know she's gonna do it and it's gonna come out amazing. Let's see how easy this is. I think if I can do it, any of us can do it. So let's get to it. The paint that I'll be using is just a regular basic acrylic paint by Apple Barrel. This is a matte finish. You can get the smaller bottles for 50 cents a bottle. So this is a very budget friendly way to paint these windows. It's gonna cost me maybe two or three dollars in color, depending on how much color I'm gonna add. So I'm gonna start off by doing a snowman on one window and I'm just gonna do a basic three snowball snowman and I'm gonna try my best to get my circles, my snowballs symmetrical. And I found that just by starting off with a rough circle and then going along the edges and adding a bit more paint to make your circle a bit wider or even it out seems to be the best way for me. To fill in the snowman, I'll be using this one and a quarter inch foam dabber. I found that this was the easiest way to fill him in to get rid of the brush strokes, all of the lines. And not only does it get rid of the lines, but it also gives the snowman texture. It's not just that smooth look, which is something that I was really happy with. So I'm gonna completely fill him in, giving this a second coat using the white acrylic paint. And it took a total of two of the smaller 50 cent bottles to completely fill him in the second time. Once I got started and I had my snowballs made, I realized that I needed some inspiration because I really wanted to keep his hat and his scarf as basic as I could. So I looked to the wood plaque from the Dollar Tree. This is a snowman plaque that I've worked with all season so far and I've done a few DIY crafts with it and I thought that this was perfect to give me the shapes that I needed for his scarf and his hat. So using some black acrylic paint and about a one inch paintbrush. This paintbrush I've been asked a lot about. This is one that you can get from Michaels. It came in a set 
and I believe it was like $7.99 for the set, but I used a 50% off coupon, so I got it for fairly inexpensive, and it came with several different size brushes. I'm gonna use this for the top part of his scarf that goes around his neck, and I'm really gonna just let the brush do the guiding. If you don't press real hard, you can get perfectly straight lines with your brush, and so once I got the first I guess go around done I realized that I wanted his scarf just to be a bit thicker so I went back in a second time just to thicken it up a bit before I added the part of his scarf that hung and so again I'm just freehanding this doing the best I can and looking to this wood plaque for inspiration guidance I think is the better word I should be using for his hat, the furry part of the hat, I am going to do that black. I'm not going to go with much color for this. I just want to stay with the traditional snowman. And because the traditional snowman typically has a black top hat, I didn't want to do the top hat. That would have been easier. I really like just the beanie instead. And so I'm going to go with the whites, blacks, and grays for this snowman. And again, I'm going to use the line that I already drew from his head to guide me to shape my hat. And so because the brim of this hat just kind of goes along with the shape of his head and it kind of goes from narrow to thicker, that's what I'm gonna do with the one inch brush again. I gotta say, not too bad. I think we're in pretty good shape, so I'm kind of happy with the outcome. I think we need to go take a look at what Kayla's doing. This is her rough outline of the snowman she's doing. She did a Google image search, found this cutie, and is replicating it. And I think that she is doing an amazing job. She is a true artist, and I can't wait to see this when it's done. For the top of Frosty's hat, I will be using this pewter gray. And again, I'm just gonna follow the lines that I already have, which would be the brim of his hat. And so just kind of guiding it, but making it a thicker, wider version. I'm not gonna overthink this. I might mess up a little, but if I do, it's very easy to fix this by taking a razor blade. The acrylic paint comes right up off the window. It doesn't take a lot of pressure. It scratches off pretty easily. And so I found that by using a razor to clean up some of my edges, it was a really easy way to do that. And because I've already got the gray paint out, I decided to take a smaller foam dabber and just add some dots to give his scarf a bit of character. I must not have gotten it on camera, but I did add a pom-pom to Frosty's hat and it is black. Later on, I end up changing the color because I'm not real happy with it. During the daytime, it looks cute, but Really, it doesn't stand out as much as I would like it to, so I ended up going with a lighter gray, and so I was happy with that. Going in for his face, I decided to take a pencil and just kind of rough draw out his face because if I mess up, I can easily cover up the pencil with more white acrylic paint versus having a black paint and freehanding it. I just didn't feel confident enough to go in and get it on one shot. And so for his eyes, they are just an easy parenthesis, a sideways parenthesis, which gives Frosty the illusion that he's squinting. And for his mouth, I'm just going to do kind of a wide C or U on its side, and then you follow up the bottom with a wider V, a rounder V. And that kind of gives the illusion that he's giggling. And in the corners of his mouth, if you just add those parentheses, it really kind of gives the dimples and adds to the smile. For his nose, the carrot is just a sideways V. It's super easy to do when you think of it that way. And don't overthink it because once we paint it and put some detail into it, it'll look a bit more realistic. Once I was happy with, I guess, my rough draft, I went ahead and just took a paintbrush and this is a thinner paintbrush and I'm just gonna go over my lines with it, doing the eyes in black, the nose in orange, and again, the mouth in black. I 
I wanted the brim of his hat to match his scarf and so I'm gonna add some gray dots to the black part of his hat as well. For his three buttons, I will again be using my one and a quarter inch foam dabber and I'm gonna just add his three black buttons. Later on, I didn't show it, but I went in with a real thin paintbrush and added four dots to each of the buttons right in the center just to give it that illusion that it's a button and not just dots. At the bottom here, I wanted to add just a bit of snow just to complete the whole scene. Off to the side, you can see that I did do a tree and I'm gonna show you how I did that after. As I was doing this window, I kind of bounced between doing the snowman and doing the tree because I wanted to let the areas dry and so I figured while the snowman was drying, I could work on the Christmas tree. And while the Christmas tree was drying, I could finish up parts of the snowman. And so after I'm done with Frosty here, I will definitely be showing you how I did the Christmas tree and how easy it is to do one. That was something that I was most intimidated to do was the tree. I almost completely forgot Frosty's arms. And so going in with Apple Barrel's Burnt Umber Brown, I'm going to make just a couple of real easy stick arms just by doing two parallel lines and then doing a V up at the top just to give it that broken two branch look. And I'm going to do that on both sides. As I was filling in the branches, I did go in with a bit of the white acrylic paint just to kind of add some dimension and color variation to the stick so it wasn't just a solid brown. And as you can see, it is getting dark. I am losing light, but I had to finish Frosty off with some rosy cheeks. And so using a bit of pink acrylic paint that I made using a red and the white, I'm just gonna do some simple circles on his cheeks. And I almost forgot, I'm gonna add some white lines to the carrot just to give it a bit of dimension. Now that Frosty's done, I will show you how I did the tree. And what do you know, it is daylight again. We've got good light. For the tree, I was super intimidated because I just feel like to make each side symmetrical is really hard. And I know that trees aren't perfect, but when you're drawing something like this on a window, you kind of want it to be a bit symmetrical. And so I looked again to Dollar Tree's wood plaque, the tree plaque for inspiration. And as I stared at it a bit, I kept trying to figure out how I could do this tree and simplify it. And after looking at it, I figured, okay, if I just do simple triangles and interlink the triangles, making the bottom triangle the widest and largest, and each triangle above is gonna be just a bit smaller, I think that this will be an easy way to accomplish making this Christmas tree. And so that's what I'm doing here. So when you're doing these triangles, I figured out later on that if I just would have done a simple triangle, instead of trying to round the edges and curve it in, it would have been easier and the outcome would have been the same. I think the outcome might have been even a bit better. But live and learn, this is the first tree I've ever done and I was freehanding it and winging it. And so I think that the outcome came out pretty good for my first time. And so, like I said, if you just interlink these, you'll get the tree outcome and the look that I got using the Dollar Tree plaque as inspiration. After a bit of straightening out some of the triangles, I was happy with the shape that I had gotten. And so I went ahead and did a rough fill-in of the tree with the green. And the green that I'm using is the March Green by Apple Barrel. When filling in the Christmas tree with the second coat, I didn't want to use the round dabber because I didn't want the round circular marks on the tree. And so I figured a better alternative would be to use one of the square foam paint brushes here. These are fairly inexpensive, under 50 cents at Walmart. I believe even Dollar Tree carries these in the tool section. And when doing this, I'm super happy with outlining the tree with this because it is giving it that wispy, uh, unclean look that I was looking for. And so I decided to fill in the whole tree like this because it was gonna add texture to it and give it a bit of dimension. And I was super happy with the way that this was turning out. 
While painting this, I was doing it completely a solid green, and again, this was the March green, but felt that I needed to add a bit more color to it, and so I went in with the Burnt Umber Brown and added just a bit of brown to it as well, too. Using the small round foam dabber, I decided to take some red and add some berries to my tree. Yes, this tree is probably looking very similar to my wood plaque three-dimensional tree that I actually DIY'd from the Dollar Tree. But I tell ya, I just love the look of berries on a Christmas tree and these small round dabbers are perfect for that and it's an easy way to add embellishments to this without having to worry about the outcome, I guess you can say. It's just easy to do, and so I filled the tree with these berries. And another part that I must not have gotten on film is adding the trunk of the tree there at the bottom, and that was easy peasy, just as easy as it looks, is the two brown lines, and I filled it in with the burnt umber brown. And it really is kind of funny to see me doing this and then look over and see Frosty not completely done. But like I said, I was bouncing between the two projects, letting them dry because I really wanted the best outcome and I didn't want to rush and continue on when it wasn't dry. Because if you do that when working with acrylic paint on glass, it can cause your acrylic paint to peel off the glass when you're putting your second coat if that first initial coat isn't completely dry. And so because I actually don't have an oven, I had to be patient and wait. And let me tell you, I did think about bringing out the blow dryer and blow drying this because it was stinking cold out. As you can tell, I started off without a beanie, had the beanie and ended up with gloves on as well because it was so stinking cold outside. I think it was down in the 30s when I was doing this. As Kayla and I were doing this, our neighbor saw us doing this and was enlisting us to do their windows as well. I am happy with the way this tree is looking. I am loving the brown in it. It is very subtle. And so now I feel like I need to maybe add some snow to the tips of this. I originally wasn't going to, but I think it does need it. And so just taking the one inch brush, I'm just gonna lightly dab along the outside edges of the tree, adding some uneven snow droppings. I think I'm gonna say that this isn't too bad. There are a couple areas that are uneven, but that's okay, it's my first window, and I honestly am happy with the way this looks. Now, to add some snowflakes to the outside of the snowman in the tree, I'll be using these stencils from the Dollar Tree, and I just cut them out. These were ones I bought at the beginning of the season, and I thought that these snowflakes were perfect. I'm not gonna freehand them because it's not gonna come out very good, so using a real light amount of paint and my dabber. I'm just gonna use these, add the paint to the stencil without gluing it or taping it, and I'm not looking for perfection because it's okay, it's gonna look great. And I'm gonna add these sporadically around the window. Checking in on Kayla, it looks like she is just about done. She is putting the finishing touches on her snowman and it looks amazing. She never ceases to amaze me with her talent. I am in awe of her. We had so much fun doing these. The outcome of both of these windows, I think, is fun, it is festive, and we had a really great day out painting windows together. Kayla, Allie, and I, Allie even got in on the action here and did these amazing little drawings and paintings. I am so proud of her. We couldn't leave her out. I'm assuming as she gets older, these are gonna get bigger. But for now, I am happy with her art piece. It's gonna stay on the window out there until this all comes down. And again, I just wanna tell you all that these are easily removed just by even adding some vinegar, adding some Windex or ammonia, and using a straight edge razor, it'll peel right up and take you five minutes. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I surprised myself. I am really happy with the outcome. I love the look of my window. It was easy to do, yeah, it was a bit time consuming, but it was the first time I had done it, so I was really just kind of feeling my way through it, seeing what worked, what didn't, what I needed to use for different textures, and I am really happy with the outcome of this. 
Kayla's window does not surprise me how amazing that window turned out. Her snowman is amazing. I love it. The detail is phenomenal and she is a true artist and it just doesn't surprise me how amazing she did. And I think that this is definitely something I'm gonna make a tradition out of. So you'll have to stay tuned for next year to see what theme we both come up with next year and what we do with our windows. I hope you all enjoyed today's video of us painting these windows and I hope that maybe I inspired you to get out there and do this as well because it really wasn't that hard and it was fun to do. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes because if we can get this video to 5,000 likes, I will most definitely do a window for you all again next year. And like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more, which is something that we need a little bit more of right now. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day and a happy holiday season and bye for now, everybody.